All right, our fourth and final JavaScript file that we're going to look at here in terms of live coding is all about functions. We saved functions for last because they're the least similar to the methods in Java. Okay, so we're saving kind of the most different thing for last. We're still going to see some similarities, um, but it looks it looks a bit different. So a couple of key notes on how this looks different. So a function declaration, key things. Um, it starts with the keyword function. So that's a little different. It is then followed by the function name. And then it is followed by the parameter list in parentheses. That part's similar. But here's how it's different. No types are specified, unlike in Java, right? Because we this uh, JavaScript is not strongly typed. Um, arguments are passed by value, just like Java. There we go, another similarity. That's good. Um, and then it is followed by the function body in curly brackets, also like Java. So here's a simple example. Let's go through each of these parts. Starts with the keyword function, function, followed by the function name. Let's calculate the mean of two numbers. Then in parentheses, we have our parameter list, but no types, just arguments. So we'll have X and Y. Then we have curly brackets for the function body. And we can just write code in here. So we'll say return X plus Y divided by two. Cool. That's what a function looks like in JavaScript. To invoke it, it's going to look just like Java. So invoking functions will look just like invoking like methods, um, or at least like static methods. So we'll say console.log mean 3, comma 7. We expect that to print 5. Let's check that. Yeah, it does. So invoking functions in JavaScript, very similar to invoking methods in Java. The declaration or definition, I haven't changed this to definition. It's more appropriate term. The definition of the function is certainly different. Um, there are several other dif differences when it comes to functions. Okay. Um, uns we don't, when we invoke a function, we don't have to specify all the, the arguments. So unspecified arguments are assigned a value of undefined. Here's an example. Let's say we have a function named say hello, and it takes one parameter of type name, and it says console.log hello name. And I'll use I'm using the back ticks here because I want to evaluate the variable in the context of the string, like we learned about earlier. So if I call the say hello method and I don't pass any arguments, hello, it will print hello undefined. Okay. So when we invoke a function, yes, it takes a single argument. We don't have to put it in. We're not going to get a compile error because we don't compile. We're not going to get a runtime error because it's JavaScript. It's just going to assign name to undefined. So when I run this, hello undefined. So just be aware of that. Yeah, yeah. Or, or handle it in some way, right? However, whatever is appropriate for the method. All right, here is a big conceptual change. Um, functions are first class objects and may be assigned to variables. 
I shouldn't use the word object. Functions are first class entities. Object means something different. Um, so I can assign a reference to a function to a variable. So I can create a variable called math operation and I can assign it a reference to the function, oops, mean. So we declared the function mean up here. I can assign a reference to that function to a variable. Um, and then I can use that variable to call the function later. So I could do something like console.log. I could say math operation and pass nine and five in there and it will re print or it will return a value of seven. So this is different. This is not something we, we ever really did in Java. The idea that we can define a function and then assign it to a variable, okay? Um, what I wanna be super clear about here is that when we assign mean to this variable math operation, we are not invoking mean, okay? We're not calling the method at this time. We're not calling the function at this time. We're simply storing a reference to it in a variable. Only later on this line of code are we actually invoking the function um, because we're, it's followed by parentheses with arguments in those parentheses. So mean, no parentheses after it, is the reference to the function. Mean with parentheses after it is invoking the function. And it's absolutely critical to keep those two things straight in your head. Um, in Java, we never really worried about it because we didn't do much with references to methods. Um, but in JavaScript, we will a lot. Um, in Java, we, did we, we didn't, I don't think, depending on when you took a PCSA, we learned how to do like anonymous classes, um, for like listeners where we didn't actually name, um, the method or the class. We can do a similar thing in JavaScript. And for those of you who took a PCSA last year, we did not do this. Um, but that's okay. Well, I'll show, still show you an example. We can have what's called a function expression. And for a function expression, there is no function name after the function keyword. Okay, so it's a function without a name. Um, and this is still useful because we can assign it to a variable. So I can say let average equal function x comma y. So notice there's no... Unlike up here, there's no function name after the keyword function and before the argument list. Here, nothing, empty. So this is our function expression. And then I can say return x plus y divided by two. Okay. Um, we can still invoke this anonymous function or this function expression because we stored a reference to it in the variable average. Absolutely, we'll do that next, absolutely, yeah. In JavaScript, you will certainly see functions defined in a more traditional fashion like this. You don't see this too often because what you see instead is what Connor was referring to is we tend to do more with arrow functions. This is much, much more common. Arrow functions are a more concise syntax for function expressions. I wanted to show you the function expression, however, to bridge the gap between the traditionally defined function and these arrow functions. The parameters are listed in parentheses. So there's a similarity. Parentheses, um, these are parameters are followed by the arrow operator. And the arrow operator is the equal sign followed by a greater than sign. The return keyword 
is implied. And here's our connection to Java. This is why we focused on this throughout the data structures unit. This is extremely similar to lambdas in Java, except in Java, the lambda expression has that arrow because why not? Let's be different. Lambdas, there, I spelled it right. So this is normally how we'd see um, this average function stored in a variable. We would say average equals x comma y, no function keyword, arrow, x plus y, divided by 2. This is defining a function that takes two parameters, performs this computation, and returns that value. And a reference to that function is being stored in the variable average. For simple functions, this is crazy common in JavaScript. We are going to see this and write this all the time. Couple additional notes on these arrow functions. If there are no parameters, we just use empty parentheses. We still need them. So I could create a, um, a variable called hello and assign it this function that takes no parentheses and just does hello world. Okay. So we still need the parentheses here to specify the arrow function. We can't like leave that out. If the code for the arrow function fits on a single line, we type it like this and it's super concise, but sometimes it does take multiple lines and that's okay. If it does, uh, we just have to use some curly brackets. So multi-line arrow functions must use curly brackets and must use the return keyword. Return is no longer implied. So if average was going to be on multiple lines of code, I could say average equals X and Y. Those are my parameters. There's my arrow operator, curly bracket, const result equals X plus Y divided by two, return result. Console.log, average three comma seven. So multi-lines, two lines. Now I have to have the curly bracket. To be clear, this curly bracket is defining a function body, not an object. Okay. If we wanted it to return an object like we did here, notice the uh, parentheses. So to distinguish between, here's an express, a single expression we're returning because it's in parentheses versus here is the function body. So that's why we use the parentheses in that previous example. So multiple lines, got to have the curly bracket, have to explicitly now have the return keyword. Here, it's implied up here. Let's make sure this stuff runs. Looks good. Cool. Now that we've seen some of this, let's go back and let's go open up objects.javascript and let's go back to this object we created up here um, and add an additional comment here and say objects may contain methods. So let's add a method to this object now that we've learned about functions. So we have a property date, we have a property habit of mind, we have a property content. Let's add another, let's add a method called get length. So we put the name of the method inside of the object. There's our parentheses, it doesn't take any parameters. We have a curly bracket for the method body and we can say return this.content.content 
length. The this keyword refers to the object similar to Java. Another similarity for us. So now we could do another console.log here and we could say journal entry dot get length and invoke the get length method on the journal entry object. Okay. So often in JavaScript, we just have functions that are more global in scope, but we can certainly add methods to objects just like this as, as well. And this refers to, the value of this is a reference to the object whose code is executing just like in Java. So there's a nice similarity there. So if I run this object thing now, we can see like when we print out the object, it has the name of the method and the fact that it is a function. And then we can see where it's printed the length. So that's cool. All right, let's switch back to functions. <clears throat> 